You're listening to the Chapter a Day Audio Bible. I'm John Stonge, and today we're in 1 Chronicles chapter 5, and we'll be reading from the New Living Translation. The oldest son of Israel was Reuben, but since he dishonored his father by sleeping with one of his father's concubines, his birthright was given to the sons of his brother Joseph. For this reason, Reuben is not listed in the genealogical records as the firstborn son. The descendants of Judah became the most powerful tribe and provided a ruler for the nation, but the birthright belonged to Joseph. The sons of Reuben, the oldest son of Israel, were Hanok, Palu, Hezron, and Carmi. The descendants of Joel were Shemaiah, Gog, Shimei, Micah, Reiah, Baal, and Beerah. Beerah was the leader of the Reubenites when they were taken into captivity by King Tiglath-Pileser of Assyria. Beerah's relatives are listed in their genealogical records by their clans. Jael, the leader, Zechariah, and Bela, son of Azaz, son of Shema, son of Joel. The Reubenites lived in the area that stretches from Aror to Nebo and Baal Maon. And since they had so many livestock in the land of Gilead, they spread east toward the edge of the desert that stretches to the Euphrates River. During the reign of Saul, the Reubenites defeated the Hagrites in battle. Then they moved into the Hagrite settlements all along the eastern edge of Gilead. Next to the Reubenites, the descendants of Gad lived in the land of Bashan as far east as Salaka. Joel was the leader in the land of Bashan, and Shapham was second in command, followed by Jani and Shaphat. Their relatives, the leaders of seven other clans, were Michael, Meshulam, Sheba, Jorai, Jakan, Zia, and Eber. These were all descendants of Abihail, son of Huri, son of Jeroah, son of Gilead, son of Michael, son of Jeshishai, son of Jado, son of Buzz. Ahi, son of Abedil, son of Guni, was the leader of their clans. The Gadites lived in the land of Gilead, in Bashan and its villages, and throughout all the pasture lands of Sharon. All of these were listed in the genealogical records during the days of King Jotham of Judah and King Jeroboam of Israel. There were 44,760 capable warriors in the armies of Reuben, Gad, and the half-tribe of Manasseh. They were all skilled in combat and armed with shields, swords, and bows. They waged war against the Hagrites, the Jedarites, the Naphishites, and the Nodabites. They cried out to God during the battle, and he answered their prayer because they trusted in him. So the Hagrites and all their allies were defeated. The plunder taken from the Hagrites included 50,000 camels, 250,000 sheep and goats, 2,000 donkeys, and 100,000 captives. Many of the Hagrites were killed in the battle because God was fighting against them. The people of Reuben, Gad, and Manasseh lived in their land until they were taken into exile. The half-tribe of Manasseh was very large and spread through the land from Bashan to Baal Hermon, Sanir, and Mount Hermon. These were the leaders of their clans, Ephor, Ishi, Eliel, Azrael, Jeremiah, Hodaviah, and Jadiel. These men had a great reputation as mighty warriors and leaders of their clans. But these tribes were unfaithful to the God of their ancestors. They worshipped the gods of the nations that God had destroyed. So the God of Israel caused King Pol of Assyria, also known as Tiglath-Pileser, to invade the land and take away the people of Reuben, Gad, and the half-tribe of Manasseh as captives. The Assyrians exiled them to Hala, Habor, Hera, and the Gozan River, where they remain to this day. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for your word, and we thank you for the privilege of being able to look at it today. 
And Lord, as we look at this portion of Scripture, we see people whom you had been faithful to. You had answered their prayers. You had fought on their behalf. But we see over time a drifting toward worshiping idols, toward worshiping the false gods of the neighboring nations. Lord, we pray that in our lives you would stay at the forefront. We pray that our lives would always be poured out in worship toward you and that we wouldn't look for idols or false messiahs or false saviors to try and take the place of your son, Jesus Christ, who is our Messiah, who is our Savior, and who is the one who brings peace to our hearts and our lives. Lord, we're grateful for your love. We're grateful that through faith in your Son, Jesus Christ, we can come before you confidently knowing that you hear us, that we have been gifted with the righteousness of Christ, and we are welcomed into your presence. We commit this day to you, Lord. We thank you for the fact that we have the full assurance of your love for us in Christ Jesus. And we pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for listening to today's episode. Before you go, I wanted to let you know about the newest podcast we've added to our lineup. It's called Daily Devotions with Pastor John. Each episode is about four minutes long, and a new episode will be available every single day of the week. So if you're looking for something new to add to your podcast list, we hope you'll subscribe to our newest show, Daily Devotions with Pastor John. You can find it on Apple Podcasts, Podbean, Stitcher, and iHeartRadio, and probably a few other places as well. You can also check it out at our website, which is DesireJesus.com. We want this to be another encouraging addition to your morning routine or your drive to work. So thanks again for listening, and have a great day. And when you get a chance, check out our newest podcast, Daily Devotions with Pastor John.